recording. I will go back to sharing and I will try to remember what I was doing. And here we go. All right. So this was Houdon's Washington life size, right? Statue. And here's Horatio Greeno's Washington, which they describe as neoclassicism combined with realism, which is also how they described this one. But again, notice the first thing you notice is the difference in dress. Here's Houdon's version of Washington as gentleman farmer in a contrapposto pose. Here is Washington as an enthroned god. We're back to the sitting on a throne look, you see? So um, we'll get into the controversy of this in a little bit. Let's just first look at what he did. So Greeno drew upon the pose an idealized form of ancient statuary going even further than Houdon did in depicting Washington as an enthroned god. He's shirtless and wearing sandals. Imagine, who, who else? You know, we don't want to see Trump shirtless. We don't want to see Biden shirtless. Um, there might be a few presidents that we want to see. You know, Putin, famous for going shirtless on a horse. Um, I don't know how many presidents wanted to be seen shirtless. Uh, how many of them had six packs? We don't know. Anyway, he's shirtless, wearing sandals. You know, George Washington probably never wore sandals in his life. He's got a toga covering his lower lower torso and then, you know, draped over the arm. His right hand points to the heavens, which is very, very similar. There's a famous artwork called the School of Athens. They've got dozens of famous Greek people from the past, Plato, Aristotle, all these people. Um, and one of them's pointing up to the heavens and one of them's pointing down to the grant, you know. So it's it's really symbolic of hand pointing up to the heavens, which I think was Arist it was either Aristotle or Plato. Anyway, um, his left hand holds a sword in its sheath with a hilt extended towards the viewer, right? I mean, here's the handle, right? So you, you can go over and grab and pull the sword out from him if, if that's right. It appears to ask viewers to pick up the mantle of defending the country's liberty while reminding them to be ever mindful of their duty to a higher authority. Here, you got to defend the homeland, but remember your duty to up there. Expression appears stern and foreboding. There are relief sculptures on both sides of the throne, depicting Hercules as an infant, sorry, as an infant. Why can't I pronounce things correctly? Hercules as an infant, and on the other side, Apollo, the Greek sun god. But remember, this is 3D. In fact, I'm going to show you a 3D thing in a moment. Um, statuettes on either side of the base of the chair back depict Native American and Christopher Columbus which is alluding to the old world and new world. But despite all of this really, really ancient Greek allusions, he went with Houdon's head, literally this same head he's using this. By the way, this is made out of Carrera marble with a granite base. It's over 11 feet tall and weighs 12 tons. Here is Washington in 3D. At the Smithsonian. I think if I, I think I have to click this. There we go. And now look at that. We can turn this around. Is this cool? Look at that. There's Apollo, the sun god. And here's Hercules as a child. Okay. 
Why do I know one versus the other? Well, you should know that Apollo rode a chariot, plus he's not depicted as a child, and uh, Hercules depicted as a little baby. And then remember in the back here, we have a saying in Latin, which we'll get to in a moment. We also have Christopher Columbus on this side. Christopher Columbus wearing a toga, which he never would have worn. And we have a Native American Indian who also, by the way, I think is wearing sort of a partial toga. So, I mean, Green Owl really went togo y here. Another way we can tell it's Hercules is because he's strangling the snake. A snake, exactly, exactly. So you got to know your 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 uh, mythology here. So again, it's kind of neat. You can you can look at this from multiple angles because, of course, it's a fully in the round statue. So you would be able to walk around it. You see, it's quite ornate here in the back, and we'll get into the translation of the Latin in the back as well. But so anybody that wants to look at this, it's like uh, yes, and here's the granite base. That's just kind of cool. Washington in 3D. So what did everybody think of this? Well, by the time Washington passed away, a, a few years after he passed away, this is now 1832, so he's been dead for a while. By then he had achieved mythic status. And Greeno's statue accentuates Washington status. This statue was placed in the rotunda of the U.S. Capitol in 1841. So he started making it in 1832, finished in 1841. 12 tons. The weight cracked the rotunda floor. They moved it to the east lawn of the Capitol in 1843. Then they transferred it to the Smithsonian Castle you can read all about the Smithsonian Castle. That was very interesting. Finally, it is now currently installed at the National American History Museum. This was done in 1964, so 121 years later. So a lot of the public were outraged over the godlike figure. And the statue was roundly criticized from the beginning. We got George Washington, our first president, semi-nude, wearing a toga, sandals. What's up with this? Godlike? Really? This was deemed offensive and laughable by a lot of people. One politician said, undressed with a napkin lying in his lap. Well, that would have to be the biggest napkin I've ever seen, but whatever. Another one suggested the sculpture be thrown into the Potomac River. So we're not going <laughs> to... It's like... Okay, you know, tell us what you really think. Techniques used to align the United States with great ancient nations back part. You know, why does Greenhour go to such great lengths to depict Washington in this manner? Well, Greek and Rome, it, it was ostensibly democracies, and we're trying to have a democracy, right? We're trying to get rid of you know, kings and queens and all that. But do we want kings and queens replaced by godlike people like Napoleon, right? Right? But Greenhour's heart's in the right place, right? He, he's achieved mythic status. We're talking about Washington here. And so we're trying to make all these allusions to ancient Greece and ancient Rome. Well, it's too much of a direct allusion to the people back then, and I would think to the people now. Americans want to become their own nation, develop their own iconography, not be carbon copies of Greece. Carbon copies didn't exist yet. And of course, they don't exist anymore. Brief period of time. Anyway, didn't want to be copies of Greece. Green Hour. <laughs> green Hour. Why do I call him Green Hour? Greeno never quite understood. You know, he thought, well, People don't like it because of poor lighting and the pedestal wasn't grand enough. No, that's not why people objected to it. You know, I could care less about the pedestal, uh, how it's lit. I just don't think that would do it for me. 
I don't think Washington depicted this way makes any sense at all. This one makes a lot more sense. So Houdin's depiction of him, which is in the Virginia State capital in Richmond, to me, that just makes so much more sense. But that's me. There was Latin. I, you know, I guess they could test you on this. I did want to refer to this. They do actually give the entire Latin. So it, it would bear going over. Um, I hate it sometimes that USAD gets very, very picky sometimes. So I just did want to mention that. Uh, I did mention it, but to actually use the phrase, I'm going to slaughter at my, I don't know Latin. So find somebody that knows Latin. It, um, the inscription on the back says, um, Simulacrum istud ad magnum libertatis exemplum nec sin ipsa duraturum Horatius Grino faciebat, which translates as Horatio Grino made this image as a great example of freedom, which will not survive without freedom itself. You know, that's a really good quote. But the rest of it, as they say in the packet here, Greenhauer's aims for this monument were ambitious, but he combined the idealism of neoclassicism with realistic portraiture, port, with realistic portraiture in a manner that some viewers ultimately found unsettling. And I guess that's the one word that I would have you come away with. It's unsettling. This is a guy who did not want to serve another term as president. He did not want to be godlike. Just kind of weird. And again, Greeno, despite the public outcry, Greeno was never convinced that his concept for Washington was to blame for its poor reception. Instead, he blamed poor lighting and an unsuitable pedestal. As one of the artist's friends asserted, this magnificent production of genius does not seem to be appreciated at its full value in this metropolis. I, you know, I don't think it's appreciated now either. So, uh, and, and rightly so. I think Houdon's is much better. I am going to uh, 